Hello, it's Cutting Time Cats. Today I'm going to review the second quarter of 2022 for the films I've seen. I saw more high scoring films during April to June and I will concentrate again on films which I've scored 7, 8 or 9, largely 8 and 9. So With No One Die, 1987, it's a classic film I've never seen before. That was really good fun. There's a lot of... Since the summer of 2021 I've been seeing one classic film every week, usually at the weekend, and it's been really a really worthwhile activity. I definitely prefer Richard E. Grant in this film compared to How to Get Ahead in Advertising, a subsequent film. A bit too zany for me, but with now and I it's sort of go on holiday by accident. To go on holiday to the the Lake District. Just really amusing, I thought. Small Lax Mangrove. Really interesting film showing the difficulties faced by Windrush arrivals in the 50s, 60s in West London. It's very educational, I found. Matt Richter's Sleep. That's a documentary in which people spend the night whilst enjoying a really long and all-night performance. An area was set up with beds or cots by I think it was Union Station, Los Angeles. They call them cots in the US. It was fascinating to watch, even though I'm not sure I'd actually want to spend the night actually doing it. Went on Fire, Ukraine's Fight for Freedom, 2015. Wow, this was like really heavy, but again, really educational. It was a film about the 2013-2014 political campaign to reassert independence of Ukraine just before Russia started its campaign to annex Crimea, a good few years before this year's awful event, the full-scale war in Ukraine. And I learned a lot about how tough the Ukrainians are, how strong their spirit is in their campaign to move closer to the EU and securing themselves as a Western democracy. The power of the dark Oh, this is a Western. Benedict Cumberbatch starred as a really forceful alpha male type. Well, more toxic masculinisation. It was just how the people he affected, how they dealt with the situation. I'll just leave it at that. Howard's End. This is a 1992 film. It stars Helena Bonham Carter. Another film set in the early part of the 20th century and it really gave a strong feel for that time and for the sort of emotional impact of places and I just thought it was a really wonderful emotional film. The Bridge to Terabithia 2007. It's a coming of age story with a really sharp twist. That's what got me thinking about it many months after seeing it. The story of make-believe and about different characters. It's about a schoolboy and a schoolgirl. The powerful messages that lessons in life that the schoolgirl taught the boy. Everything, everywhere, all at once. This is really complicated based on multiverses. The idea that several universes can exist at the same time and the protagonist jump from one to another. It's almost like the movie to end all multiverse. If it's a subgenre and it's the climax of the subgenre. I watched it twice. The friend whom I saw it with on the second visit didn't particularly like it. She thought there was too much going on, but I got it better on the second attempt. I just understood what was going on a lot better, so I think sometimes you do need to see something twice. Helen Foe, 2007. This is set in Scotland. It's a story of a, a teenage boy attracted to an old woman and he chats her up. He is voyeuristic and it's a bit creepy but not too not harmful but interesting story that i remember race and the jailbird this is a belgian film flemish language it's a sort of crime drama about a, a man who's been brought up in a criminal family he's used to bank robberies but he falls in love with a woman who races cars he wants to give up his life of crime she wants to start a family how things turn out aren't exactly how he hopes and how she hopes because 
there are some twists it's really dramatic it's quite violent but there's a lot of emotion and thought that went into the story men this is a strange story it stars jessica butley and roy kinnear a young widow played by jessica butley she goes on a retreat and she meets some very strange characters terrifying characters and they're all men it becomes quite a visceral horror film and i'm not really that keen on those but the way the film panned out there's something about the characters that Roy Kinnear plays I mean he's amazing unrecognisable but it's really creepy and dark Brothers in Arms also known as Semper Fi I like this film because it references the seven habits of highly effective people I like the title Semper Fi much more than Brothers in Arms the UK title as it's the story of two brothers one who ends up in jail and the other who gets an entourage of his military but semi-criminal friends to perform a jailbreak. It's again quite violent but it's got a strong emotional impact. Good luck to you Leo Grand. This is uh, stars Emma Thompson and it's about an older woman and a younger man. She hires this escort and that's this guy. It's played out in one room but it's a very dialogue heavy film. Tang Yang Kipperbang in 1982. It was broadcast on the second night of Channel 4 being on air back in November 1982 and it's set in post-war about three years after the Second World War finished. It's got a lot of made-up terms that this young lad in school uses. It's a sort of coming-of-age story as he shuts up a girl who's going out with someone else but he tries to make an impression on her. I think it's the lingo sort of slang terms that him and his friends came up with. It was Joe Bell which I've reviewed already of that and Elvis, the Baz Luhrmann film. That is really amazing. Emotional. Takes you to that era. It's got Tom Hanks starring as a sort of almost like a baddie. Not, he argues that he's not a baddie. When you hear the music, the whole atmosphere, it really takes you back to the 50s, 60s, 70s. It's a real homage to Elvis and to that whole era. So those are the films for my second quarter hope you enjoyed this review thanks for watching let me know your thoughts bye for now